Hey everyone, this is Eric. And today, because it's summer and I like to go out and sit in people watch, we are going to model a park bench together. But not just any bench, actually the biggest bench I've ever seen. It's actually called Mega Bench. So you can see behind me, we're gonna do that. Stay with me. So what exactly is a mega bench other than just a really big bench? This is actually a specific bench. Let me pull up an image. I was traveling recently in Vancouver, BC. And if you take the ferry across from downtown into North Vancouver, there's a new plaza that is built in the shipyards uh, of the Lonsdale neighborhood or district. Now this bench here comprises of over 1000 wood slats that undulate. It's 50 meters long by three meters wide. So by mega bench, I think it earns its title. So now here's the thing though, that's the bench. How are we gonna model this in SketchUp? And how am I gonna do it in just 10 to 15 minutes? That is a mega problem for me to solve and for you to see if I can do it. So let's get, let's just go ahead and get to it. So um, actually before I do that, let me just kind of talk to you a little bit about the complexity of how we're going to do this. So number one, you can see that the bench goes up and down and up and down. It has a, grade change. So you can see it's higher in the back and then lower in the front and it has a batter to it. So that's like a slight uh, tilt or lean so that when you lean against it, it's comfortable. So we go flat to battered to up to down to up to down to up and then finally down again. So let me show you what I mean here. If I click on my section cut, you can see here, if you watch the profile growing, watch as the profile of the bench changes as it reveals itself here. So now it's down then it's going back up again. And then all of a sudden it kind of levels off and it becomes these two platforms with the, the batter. So a lot going on, of course, I don't have a thousand slats here. I have a little bit less than that, but let's, um, let's see. The hardest part about this thing actually is not the modeling it. It's just thinking about how the brain interprets the ups and downs and the lefts and rights and the tilts. So let's go ahead and start with a brand new file. So there I am, hi Eric. Let's draw out, let's go to units. So we're gonna go model info, units, and I'm gonna go decimal because it is in Vancouver and we're gonna change this to meters. And again, I might have to flip back and forth because I work in Imperial normally. So we're gonna type in 50 meters long comma three meters wide. So this is sort of how big this bench is. Because I know that this comes up 18 inches, which is sort of the seat wall height. And I know that there's a grade change of another 18 inches. And that's kind of why you get this back to the bench. So if I go up another 18 inches, you can see here there's stairs at the edge where you'd go from the upper plaza to the lower plaza. Not really important for our purposes, but you can see that it actually works as a dual sided bench. So you got 18 inches on the top side, 18 inches on the bottom side. So with that, what we need to do is think about that batter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just put this batter in now. By batter, what I mean is that kind of tilt. So if I push this back, I'm gonna lean this back edge. Let's push this back. I don't know what the right amount is. I'm kind of guessing. So I'm gonna say six inches because I feel like that looks right. And I feel like that looks comfortable if you were to kind of lean against that. Now, the second thing we need to do is figure out how many divisions we need in order to be able to do the ups and downs and where the flats are. I'm gonna grab this whole end and I'm just gonna copy it and I'm just gonna times this by seven. Again, I've already kind of done the hard thinking. I know there's seven pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I know that this one stays flat. This far right one stays flat bottom, flat top, which means the undulations start, if I go back to this image just really quick, you can see that the undulation starts here and it goes up to a high point and then it drops back down, three waves. One, two, three. If you look really close, these back waves, these other two actually go up higher than the back of the bench, whereas this first wave looks like it sits flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit that first wave flush, and then I'm gonna pull these second waves, um, two and three, up higher. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take my arc tool, and I'm gonna start my wave here. So I wanna come up, to about there. And then I know that this one here comes down. So that's kind of my, this will be my first 
wave. And I'm not like making sure that this is any particular radius. I'm just kind of drawing it. Now here's where the next waves are going to get taller. So what I'm going to do is come up and I'm going to inference and I'm going to come up an extra foot. I'm going to come up an extra, um, not that high, maybe 2.5 feet. And what that does, 2.5 feet, there we go. So now this extra line here is a foot. It comes up 11 inches and that's okay. Um, I'm just guessing again. It just means that there's going to be a little bit of a slope as you come up and that's the peak of the wave. So I'm going to grab that one here. Now that's, this one goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then down again. So let's stop there. Let's grab this here. I'm going to do the same arc tool for this wave. I'm just kind of eyeballing it at this point just to kind of move quickly. You can see I did that wrong. I was trying to go up to this peak there and then I want to go up to this peak again there. And I'm just kind of making sure that these um, I don't need all of this extra stuff. You're going to see here in a second that I'm really just using this, these little wave lines, almost like a scaffolding. So, right, if you think about this as the framework for running sandbox from contours, that's what we're going to do in just a second. I've already got my sandbox tools up and running. Let's just get rid of all of this extra line work that I don't need. That's just so that I knew where things touched. This one's a little bit trickier here because this one um, goes up, but it stays flat. So this one is where, okay, that one's fine. I need that one, but I have to kind of think about this because this back part needs to stay flat. So I want to do is get rid of those, all those extra lines, but um, maybe I'll keep that for right now. I can always delete them afterwards. So what I'm trying to do here is get just the scaffolding that I need. I'm using the word scaffolding. Maybe that's not the right term, but I'm I'm wanting to use the sandbox tools. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this and that and this and that and that. Not the bottom, only the edges. And if I have to get a little flat part in there, I can. And you can see what I'm doing. So I'm skinning. I'm about to skin this whole thing. There we go. So uh, this stays flat. So this is all skinned. So I'm going to go ahead and press Sandbox from Contours. And it should, if I pull this up, if I copy this up for a second, you can see that that has made a nice little terrain skin. So that's cool. So what I'm going to do is just for fun, I'm going to make a copy of this because I want to see where we're going, where we've gone, where we've been. So let's make a copy of that. This is where it's going to start to get a little bit interesting. I now have the shape that I need. If I turn off my hidden geometry, I need to make sure that this is a solid group. So I'm going to explode everything. I'm going to use my X-ray mode and I'm going to get rid of any interior lines that happen to be in there. Because as you know, if you know anything about solid groups in SketchUp, you can't have this interior geometry. Um, or else it won't be solid. So in this case, I might even have to go in and group and then delete this. And then here we go. So if I turn off my x-ray mode, now we need to make this a group. So not just a group, but a solid group. You can tell if it's solid by opening up your entity info and seeing solid group. If it doesn't say that, it could be that there's a stray line. For example, there's a stray line, no longer a solid group. If I go back in, delete that stray line, and you can see if I select it, solid group. We are good. So now if I want to get complicated, I can go in and create more fancy shapes, but I actually don't need this. This is not the bench. This is going to be the thing that we cut to make the mold to then cut the bench from the slats. So this is where, the again, the, the modeling is not difficult. It's the pre-thinking that is hard. So let's go ahead and grab the thing that we are going to skin. So here I'm just going to make a simple rectangle. I'm going to pull this all the way to the end. I'm going to group that and just to differentiate it, let's go ahead and give that maybe um, a transparent color so we can see. So what I need to do is I need to remove, essentially I'm going to remove this from this. And that's where solid tools 
comes in handy. Both of them are solid groups. I'll leave this open so I can see solid group, solid group. Now I can use solid tools. That's the second tool set that I pulled out here. Uh, I've got my sandbox, of course. Now what I want to do is I want to remove this from this. So I believe if I click this one first and then hover over this icon, it says subtract, and then I can choose my red box. And then you can see what happened is I've sort of inverted my bench, right? So I now have everything except for the part that I need for my bench. And that's because I'm going to use this to cut from my slats. So let's go ahead and model some slats. Now I'm going to grab this here just so that I kind of know how big, I just want to kind of remember the dimensions that I'm working with. So I just need to know that this is, this is the start. I don't, I don't need these lines here. I just want to know where the start and where the end is of my 50 meters. So I'm going to draw something like around here. And then I'm going to give that a thickness. So I'm going to pull that out. Now the slats in real life are probably closer to two inches, but I don't really want a thousand slats in my model. I kind of want half of that. So I'm going to make this um, a four inch thick wood slat. And then I'm going to copy that instead of copying that a thousand times. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Uh, let's see here. Hang on, let me make sure that, okay, yep. So let me do that again. Let me copy that over and snap it at the edge of place. We're gonna use the um, modifier. So I'm using the modifier, copy, uh, move. And then instead of hitting the number of copies I want, because I don't know how many I want, I'm just gonna hit divide by. And I've already tried this and I think somewhere around 400 copies works. So I'm gonna do that. And the reason why I'm using 400 is because I'm wanting a gap in between them, but I want the gap to be much smaller than the actual slat, the wood piece itself. So now I can just basically select all of those wood slats, subtract, hold shift to subtract my cutter and make those a group. And if I did this right, you're going to see that this is a solid group. So I didn't actually make these components. This is all loose geometry. So each slat is actually just loose geometry. And that was done for a reason because as a group, now I have them as one solid group. And I need that so that I can then do the same thing that I just did. I'm gonna select this one first instead of this one. And then that one, I'm gonna select the cutter. So I'm gonna want, this is my cutter. And I'm gonna say cut from here, which is the um, slats. Now, because there's 400 of them, it is gonna take I don't know, anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute for me on my machine to process. If you're doing a really, really complex operation like I am, where you're cutting lots and lots and lots of geometry using solid tools, I would suggest being patient and just taking your hand off the mouse for a second and just letting it do its thing. And there it is. You can see it's done cutting. I'm going to go ahead and um, it used the, the um, sort of transparent color that I used from my cutting object. So I'm just going to go inside this whole thing. And let me just go ahead and remove any of the materials um, so I can start fresh with a nice wood color. What color do I want to do? I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but let's just kind of pop something in there. And then let's take a closer look at the final results. So if I turn my hidden geometry on, or if I turn my back edges, maybe just my hidden geometry on, you can see those undulations. You can see we go up, we start down, we go up, and then we go down, and then we go up, and then down, and then up, and then we level out. And again, if you get any extra stray lines like I have here, that's all right. You can just hide them. It's not a big deal. It all just depends on where everything kind of lined up. And I'm kind of okay with having to hide a couple of stray edges. Um, but, you know, really, really cool the fact that it didn't actually take me that long to do the actual modeling. What took me a long time was to figure out what was up, what was down, where does it step back, where does it batter, where does it start, where does it finish. That's what sort of took me um, the most amount of time. The actual modeling you can see using only two native tools, which is sandbox tools and the solid tools. So two native tools, and I was able to create this, you know, fairly complex bench in a short amount of time. So hope that that was interesting and that you, um, hope that was not just cool, but mega cool. 
So I'm going to leave you there. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that uh, my point here in doing this bench was to reinforce again one more time is that the hard part is the thinking. The easy part is the modeling. If you know which tools to deploy, whether they're native tools or if you felt like maybe in the future you want to say how would an extension handle something like this, of course, there's always that option and you can go that way too. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe so that you get all the notifications when we release these videos, especially the live streams that come every Friday. And I will say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.